Dropping a jelly-filled donut's never a good thing. But dropping a jelly-filled donut from a second-floor balcony nearly 20 feet in the air? Well, that's a whole different story. Had our donut hero used SolidWorks Simulation Professional, he could have performed a drop test to see just how dangerous it was walking around with untied laces. Let's take a look. To get started, all you need to do is choose to create a new study and specify the drop test type and give it a name. In this case, we'll call it Jelly Drop. You can see that SOLIDWORKS Simulation does some of the work for us, automatically capturing the materials from our design, such as this fine jelly filling in this delicious donut material. It's also by default set at a bonded contact. Now we can override this to allow for penetration to get a better understanding of how the jelly filling will actually interact with the rest of the donut. Additionally, creating a mesh is usually an automatic process, but we're going to tweak this a little bit and choose Curvature Mesh and give it a finer detail to get a better results in the end. Then all we need to do is go ahead and set up the actual physical conditions. Here we can see that we can specify a drop height or a velocity in case for some reason you wanted to throw the donut. Here we'll go ahead and specify the height, 20 feet. And then we need to specify the direction of gravity. For this, you can select nearly any reference geometry in SOLIDWORKS, and I've created a plane at a fairly random angle. No donut drops squarely on the ground. Finally, you can also see at the bottom, you could go ahead and tweak the target object. Now we're dropping this onto a hard flat floor, so we'll leave the defaults. Simply go ahead and press OK, and then choose to run the simulation. Now being a nonlinear simulation, the results take a little while to calculate, so I've already done that for us. Here we can go into the results and see there are different ways of viewing the performance of our object under these circumstances. Displacement's probably a pretty good example, so let's go ahead and look at that. You can see here that the donut doesn't fare very well. There's a lot of red on the design, which is really the point at which our donut's going to fail and break apart. More importantly, we can see that the jelly filling is really dispersing all over the place. So the donut doesn't really fare very well. But what about dropping the donut off from a three foot table, which is a common occurrence? To create a new study based on this one, we simply need to right click on it and choose to duplicate it. Then go into the study and change any parameters that are different, in our case, the height we're dropping the object from. And then again, rerun the study. Again, in this example, I've already created these results, and let's go ahead and take a look. Here you can see that the donut fares much better being dropped from a three-foot table. There's no red on the design, and it's much lighter blue. More importantly, we can see that the jelly filling isn't dispersing nearly as badly from this height. So that leaves only one question. Is the five-second rule good enough?